Hola, me llamo Aroncia. My name is Adonaya, and I am a junior taking Spanish 3 at Alma High School. And today I'm going to be reading chapter 14 of Stella Diaz Never Gives Up. Here we go. The second day of camp, Mr. Kyle and Miss Susan introduce us to one of our big projects. At first, the project is sort of a mystery. It's best if we explain it in the penguin habitat, says Miss Susan. We all squeal together as a group. In the habitat, we are not allowed to pet the penguins. It's still great, though. This is the closest I've ever been to a penguin. I'm within arm's length of a cuddling one. Kristen leans into me. It smells sort of fishy in here. I nod, but I really don't mind. Their little waddles and personalities are so funny, I can ignore the smell. Mr. Kyle holds up a rubber ball and throws it at the penguins. They have so much fun pushing it around to each other, almost like Biscuit with his toys. Today, you're going to make toys for the animals, similar to the ball I just threw. They're called enrichment toys. The toys help the animals exercise their minds and bodies. Awesome, replies Marielle. If I'm not a zoologist, I definitely want to be a designer. I try to smile at her. I'm determined to make her my friend, but she turns her head again before she can see me. Follow us. It's inspiration time, says Miss Susan. They take us to the official enrichment room. It's where they store all the toys that belugas, otters, sea lions, and dolphins play with. The toys come in all varieties. There are frisbees, balls, hula hoops, and even ice cubes, ice cubes in a cooler. I pick up a plastic figure. It sort of looks like a skeleton. That's the sea lion's favorite toy at Halloween, says Miss Susan, grinning. After we examine the enrichment toys, Mr. Kyle says, as you design, imagine how the animals might engage their senses with the toy. Think about how the animals could play with your toy in their groups. We get to work in the big craft room. The craft room is like our own personal art supply store. It has all the supplies you can imagine. Now, before you get to work, says Miss Susan, we'd like for you to get into groups of threes. Kristen and I naturally team up. We even ate lunch together yesterday. When we look around, it seems as if everyone has formed their groups. Everyone except for Mario. Mario, do you want to be part of our group? asks Kristen. Mario shrugs her shoulders. The three of us sit down at a table. We are a little silent as we sketch our ideas. I keep biting my lip, trying to figure out what to say to Mario. The thing is, I don't know where to begin. I don't. I know that she's been to Florida, but I've never been there, so I don't know what to ask her about it. I've also never been snorkeling, so I can't talk about that. I even think about using a conversation starter. Thankfully, Logan breaks the silence by asking Mr. Kyle a question. How did the animals end up here? Wouldn't they rather be in the oceans? Mr. Kyle sighs. You're right, but many of these animals are rescues. They were injured from fishing nets or tied up in plastic. The aquarium is a sanctuary for them, a safe place that is not quite their home, but at least protects them from harm. Since their habitats here are smaller than their natural surroundings, they aren't able to do everything they would do regularly. For example, hunt for their own food or explore. Because of that, the animals can get a little restless or bored. By making these toys for them, you're improving their quality of life. I frown a little. I still love the aquarium because I can see the animals firsthand. But at the same time, I feel sad for the animals. They are living far away from where they were born. I know how bad it feels when you feel like you don't belong. I want to make the ocean safe for all the sea creatures so they never have to leave. Unfortunately, this plastic problem is huge. I need to figure out a way to fix this.